Yeah, well done, and what a start. And just uh, let's remind ourselves, 10 games in all competitions, yeah. seven wins, only three draws, eight clean sheets, and only two goals conceded. From the moment, of course, he took charge for the first time at Stamford Bridge in that 0-0 draw against Wolves to a 1-0 downfield against Liverpool. And we touched upon it, you've had it in your managerial career, when you go in with no pre-season, you take over somebody else's players, and he literally had, what, 12 hours before that first fixture against Wolves. Yeah, it looked like it. But he certainly improved. But how 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 much of a skill is that to yeah. to get your stamp on a team so quickly? Yeah, but it's it's all about teaching. You know, he's going to the best college ever. You know, and he's obviously a very very good teacher. You know, you go to the worst school, you're not going to learn much. I think this guy knows how to teach. He's on there. They drilled. Michael will go on the training field, and when you come off it, you'll know exactly what your job is for the Saturday. And like the midfield would know, like the fullbacks, wingbacks would know, the three of the defenders, the goalkeeper knows exactly what he requires of them, and that is a good coach. You can tell. You can tell from the the building process when the, at the Wolves game, the the result away at Atletico was a fantastic mm. result, probably the best result he's had there, bar that one tonight. This is the Premier League. He needs to finish in the top four. We've said it time and time again. No matter how good this start is, it's on a knife edge. If he doesn't finish in the top four or he doesn't win the Champions League to qualify for the Champions League next year, Chelsea are probably looking for a new job, for a new manager. That is the nature of the beast of being Chelsea manager. Mm. And he is aware of that before he's come to the club. He's doing a brilliant job up to now. But fine margins. It can all go wrong. I don't think it will. I think their squad is conditioned. They've been rotated brilliantly, and I think they all know the system. So when he changes one and someone else goes in, yeah, the characteristics might change somewhat, different personnel, but they know exactly what he requires. And if they lose, they lose knowing what they're doing. They don't come up the pitch saying, well, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Should I have pushed in there? They know exactly what they're doing. Because every single day on the training field, morning and afternoons, a couple of days a week, he trains them, he's there, not killing their legs, just teaching. And why wouldn't he be? Really interesting to hear Mason Mount talk about the high line that Tim was pointing to at half-time, where his goal came from. Clearly a plan from Chelsea. Absolutely. And for Liverpool's point of view, you just got to use your brains. I mean, the players, Kabak and Fabinho, know that the danger is in behind. If you have a high line, Timo Werner's there, he's going to run you in behind. But in the second half, they learnt from it. Too late. One nil down and they controlled the game in the second half. Mm. It's a lovely finish for him in the end, wasn't it? It was a really good finish, and it was was cute the way they broke. I mean, Alexander Arnold gets caught up the field. You see, he goes on, he's on the front foot. You watch him here, he's just... uh, he moves forward, Alexander Arnold, to push forward, and he leaves Mount in that little cheap position there, and he doesn't track him. But he knows, great header from Aspilicueta there, and then Kante sees him on the switch of play. Um, and that's the little burst of pace you're talking about. Now, Alexandre Arnaz has to get in, inside of uh, Fabino and help him out, but he doesn't. He sags really deep, and there's little gap there for, for Mount to whip it in, and he whips it with pace. Alisson can't get across to it. But and when we first watched this, Michael, we thought there was a gaping hole on that side, but it wasn't. He had to squeeze no. it through, didn't he? No, that camera angle behind is, uh, is a brilliant one. It just shows you how precise he had to be. Alisson got close to it. Here's the, here's the, uh, the goal and, and what Tim was referring to in terms of Trent Alexander-Arnold moving forward. And you see he's, uh, he's been doing that. Andy Robertson playing as a higher a, a left-sided player. And then you've got uh, Trent that's, uh, that's just creeping in there. Mason Mount exploits the space. I do think, though, that Trent can do more when, once he gets back in there. You see the ball going played over Fabinho. He could possibly be aware as well. I would have thought if this was Henderson, he might have been aware. We've seen him covering for Trent quite a few times as well. But in this position now, send him out wide. Send him down to the left. You can't let him cut inside here. And Trent's got to do more to cover his mate inside when he does cut in. I think this is a, a better example of... Of, uh... Absolutely. I mean, he's got to show him down the line onto his left foot, or Trent has to stay in line. He cannot sag back like he does. As soon as he takes it inside, he's opening up the whole of the goal. At the moment, if he takes him down the line, Alisson's going to save this in this area. Hmm. But as soon as he drags it inside, he opens up all of the goal and he sticks it in this bottom corner. You'd say, A fantastic from, finish. From where he is, Tim, in, in that position there, you'd say it's virtually impossible to cut inside and score. Yeah. With the, they're, they're almost stacked alongside each other, Trent and, and Fabino. So 
It's a real poor goal from Liverpool's point of view. One long ball over the top, caught them out, and then they let the mount uh, cut inside onto his strong right foot. Mm, interesting celebration as well. Mason Mount, a bit better than that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, you had a close look tactically from both sides, but Ch Chelsea, first of all, what did you make of, of their shape tonight? Yeah, Chelsea were... were um, Play quite direct in the first half in terms of using the pace of their attacking players, but at certain points as well, when that ball wasn't on, they really flooded forward and almost created an overload. Here we see five against four um, in the final third for, for uh, in Chelsea's favour. And as the as the game went on, we saw quite a few examples of of this wing backs getting involved in the game. Uh, Liverpool keeping their back four in the midfield, not really turning around and having a look what's behind them. And they outnumbered them on a couple of occasions. We see the first example there. And, uh, and this happened time and time again, Tim. This is how uh, Thomas Tuchel trains. He trains five and five, so six with the goalkeeper. When you flood forward, you flood forward. Five of you go. Don't let six go. Don't leave us exposed at the back. Five go forward, five stay back. And there's always someone in the middle of the pitch in a box area, and you see it here. They flood forward, they're allowed to. They're not thinking about coming back because they know I'm part of the five, I'm going to go. And they flood the box and they wait till the action's over. And then when it breaks down, they hardly ever get counted because they're always secure in the middle of the pitch. Yeah, this was, uh, was a real good example of, of Chelsea playing on the front foot today. I thought they played particularly well. I've been watching them in the last few games under two clan. I must admit, despite their results being good, I've not been really enjoyed watching them play. But today, I thought they were very good. Again, here, five players getting forward. Look at that. There's your box, Michael. Yeah. There's your box. Yeah, half the team going forward and half of the team protecting at the back. And it's enough when you're playing at Anfield to get five players forward is, uh, is a good number. And they could have scored a, a, a few more, Chelsea. They played particularly well. So they had a mixture today. The ball's going over the top and the penetrating passes throughout. And this, again, getting five men forward. This ends with a, a decent effort on target. And then another one that Andy Robertson does really well to clear at the end. Mm. And those five at the back you're talking about, obviously with the goalkeeper, in his ten games in charge, eight clean sheets Chelsea have kept him. Yeah. I mean, I think they're in pole position. Out of them challenging teams, just below now on. I think Man United, Man City, obviously, I think that they are the next in line. I think I would say if I was going to put my life on it, it would be Chelsea to finish in the top four. OK, Michael, we've praised Liverpool for this record, that record, all in positive fashion. That's a, a badly unwanted one for them tonight. Five consecutive home league defeats for the first time in their history. Where are they at the moment? What did you make of them this evening? They can't score. Simply can't score. At the moment, they don't really look like scoring. Um, bad choices of finishing, you know, not creating enough chances. The defensive record isn't the worst in the world. I mean, we just saw that graphic. Yes, they conceded a few against Manchester City, but apart, who doesn't? Apart from that, they're only conceding one a game. They... But to back you up, it's over 10 hours at Anfield with no goal from open play. Well, exactly what I'm saying. And not that they're missing loads of chances. They're hot. They don't look like scoring. That's the problem. I mean, you're always going to get chances. I think, did they have one shot on target? A header, it? yeah. A header that was, like... My grand could have saved. I mean, it wasn't even a chance, really. So they don't look like scoring. That's the problem. We can harp on about defenders missing all we like. And, of course, they have a knock-on effect because then you're taking a midfielder out that's, you know, that's an important part of, of the team. So, yes, there's knock-on uh, problems there. But when you've got a strike force of, of what Liverpool have got, and now Jota's coming back as well, God, need to create more... M m m loads more chances than they're creating at the moment. OK, Liverpool have it all to do. We will get into both sides of the story in detail, but that is the very interesting Premier League match week complete, which all began in familiar fashion with 21 wins in a row in all competitions for Pep Guardiola's Manchester City 4-1. They beat Wolves on Tuesday. Then the draw uh, between Burnley and Leicester. The win just for the fourth time all season for the bottom club Sheffield United with 10 men against Aston Villa. Uh, and the goalless draw uh, between Crystal Palace and Manchester United. Today, Spurs one goal enough, one goal ruled out for Fulham, but three points for Jose Mourinho. Three wins out of three and nine on the road for Everton. Richarlison scoring for fourth game running, getting all three points for Carlo Ancelotti at the Hawthorns. And Mason Mount is the Chelsea match winner at Anfield. Their first win in almost seven years at Anfield.
So a reminder for Chelsea, they go fourth. Everton did go into that final Champions League position for a couple of hours after their win at the Hawthorns. But Chelsea, a point ahead of them. But as you can see, Everton do have that game in hand. It's away at Aston Villa. If they were to win that, then they would have the advantage. Indeed, just a point behind Leicester and two behind Manchester United. Liverpool, uh, they are on 43 points, four off the top four. Uh, one head of Tottenham who have a game in hand. Aston Villa, two games in hand on the Premier League champions. Fulham missed that opportunity to get out of the bottom three for the first time since mid-December. They are still three from safety and perhaps crucially as well, Newcastle and Brighton have played a game less than Scott Parker's team. Lots of steps forward in recent weeks. Does that feel like the biggest of the lot? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know where the season is at the moment. It's very tight in the top four. Um, we want to keep pushing. We're in and around it and, and these big games we need to win um, along with the, the other games as well. And I think recently we've been on a good run. We've been keeping clean sheets, being good defensively, but we haven't been scoring enough. Um, haven't probably scored, uh, made enough chances recently as well. So tonight to, have, to get the goal, um, maybe we could have had a couple more. Um, but yeah, it was very good to score. Talk us through the game plan tonight and was your goal a result of it? Yeah, the, the game plan was to, to press them high, not let them have the ball. We know how good they are when they have the ball. Um, they can control it here at Anfield. Um, so we had to go and, and be brave and go and push up forward um, and win the ball back, try and win the ball back up high. Uh, and most of the time their defensive line is quite high. Um, so the runs in between is on. So we tried to exploit that and, and obviously that's where the goal came from. Was, was that the game tonight really? The ball yeah. in behind either way actually? Yeah, right or left. Um, Obviously, credit to the to the midfield boys and at, and at the back when we won the ball, they was always looking for it. Um, and me, Timo, Hakim, trying to give that threat in behind and and um, yeah, try and run. And, and it obviously, it paid off in the end. Jamie Carragher said on commentary, "You're quicker than you look." <laughs> <laughs> was that the key actually? That you just had that little burst away, I think, from Fabinho, and did that open it up for you? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not the quickest, but yeah, I have a little um, burst of pace that give me a little bit of a, a yard. Um, and then when I'm in the box, just trying to get a little bit more space, come in on my right, um, which I think I can do more and I think I can do better um, with that. Um, so when I had, was one-on-one, -on -one, I just tried to move it and, and get my shot off and it went in, so I'm very happy with that. So you said off camera, you're going to tell us about the celebration. Go on. Yeah, it was um, obviously we take a lot of flights to away games and um, me and Chile sit behind Kurt Zuma in the plane and he's always watching um, 